Hello and welcome to the business interview. I'm Marcus Carlson. This week, we're at the World Economic Forum, which is underway here in Davos. This event brings together business leaders from around the world. But today, I'm sitting down with a man who's uh, made a name for himself as an atypical French chief executive. Uh, Jean-Pascal Tricoir leads uh, Schneider Electric, a maker of electrical equipment. He raised eyebrows a few years back when he became the first uh, chief executive from the CAC 40 in France to uh, move outside France by relocating to Hong Kong. First of all, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you. Now, Good at the World Economic Forum, a lot of conversations are centered on where the global economy is heading. As a representative of a French international company, what, what's your sense when it comes to the health of the global economy in 2015? Well, it's, uh, it's very contrasted, right? If, if you look at uh, the post-crisis years, I would say that every year has been a form of roller coaster. Uh, the, the, the cycles, the volatility, the variations have been huge. The, the latest things are the variation of the euro to the dollar or the new price of oil. Mm -hmm. and, and we've got to adapt to that. Uh, as, a, as a global company, uh, the benefit of, the, of what we have constructed, of what we have built over the years, is that we are very balanced. I mean, we do roughly 30% of our business in the Americas, 30% of our business in Asia, on, on the rest of our business in between Europe, Africa, and Middle East. And that exposure, that, that diversity of exposure, means that when there is a blip somewhere, we can compensate with, with somewhere else. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing for our business. I mean, in front of this new environment, which is changing so fast, you have to be more agile. And, and we've, we've taken the same set of capabilities. Our company is really specialized in energy management and automation, but we've deployed it into four markets. So it's building, infrastructure, industry, and IT. And there again, mm -hmm. when there is a variation in one of those markets, you are able to compensate and to capture the wins in other markets with the same set of capabilities. You say that, that you're on a roller coaster ride. Do you think it's more complicated to be a chief executive of a, of a big multinational company in 2015 than it was before the financial crisis or 10 years ago? Well, I, I would tend to think so, uh, possibly. Uh, but I think every period has carried its, uh, its lot of difficulties, so it's difficult for me to speak. I've been in the same company for the past 30 years, so I see what we have experienced. Mm -hmm. uh, the other years were probably on, not on the same nature, but you, you've got several factors that make it a bit more complex probably today. Globality, globality of what we do. I mean, we are in 100 countries, so everything we do, you have to tailor it to the culture, the fashion, the constraints of every, uh, every country. You have to be both global and, and local. Uh, the size of the companies, because the world becoming more global, we have been all pushed to become bigger. Mm -hmm. So at Schneider, we've got 160,000 people, and really you've got, as a leader, to take them around the same mission, wherever they are in the world, whatever they do in, a, in the company. And I, I would believe that the biggest thing has been transparency. Uh, with the internet, uh, you can't, y y transparency is everywhere. I mean, uh, uh, you've got employees chatting on, 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 on the internet about what they feel about Schneider, customers uh, saying what they think about Schneider. You've got a total visibility on what we do, which is good. So you have to be very communicative in a I don't think communication changes reality. I mean, you've got to work a lot about your company on making it, uh, making it good in many aspects. I mean, on making sure that what you say is what you do. Now, we've seen a, a lot of worries about the European uh, economy overall in the past few years and also about the, 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 the French economy. Do you get a lot of questions here in Davos and elsewhere as well, for that matter? As a French CEO, do you get a lot of questions, people wondering, how's it going? Of course. I mean, uh, uh, Europe is, uh, is the biggest economic region of the world when you consider it integrated, which to a large extent economically is the case. Uh, I, I think we can speak politically, but economically, mm -hmm. companies have integrated Europe into one block. Uh, and inside Europe, France is the sixth largest uh, economy, and many people are investing in France or have invested in France, so they are interested by what is happening. So it's important to give the feel and to tell them what they have to read between the lines. Or and what do you tell them? Well, I, I, look, I mean, uh, Europe has plenty of things to, uh, to resolve, but when you see how the Eurozone on Europe has been through the crisis, I mean, we've dealt, or our leaders have dealt with one by one the issues. We still need a lot of reform. And uh, on the encouraging thing 
is that some countries have done many reforms, and by the way, they are doing better mm -hmm. than others, and some countries still need to do reforms. So we've seen in the past year uh, the French government really being more on the trend of pro-business reforms, uh, particularly trying to free some sectors of the economy. Is France on the right track? And uh, Well, we, we've got many things to do uh, still, but, but at least the intention is getting uh, on a better track than it was before. Now, as I said in, in my introduction, you, you relocated to Hong Kong in 2011, I believe. Yeah. Uh, do you look at France and the French economy in a different way now that, that, than you did before your relocation? No, I don't think so. I mean, you never lose contact with your country of origin. I, I, I go there quite often. Uh, it's do you just, think you have uh, more uh, of an uh, outsider's perspective? Yeah, but I, look, I was, before I was outside, I was expatriate or living in Africa, in China, in Italy, and in, in the U.S. for almost 15 years. So I, I built uh, an inside vision of my country on an outside vision of, uh, of my country. And by the way, this outside vision of, of the country is always very important because mm -hmm. you look at your own uh, uh, place with different goals. You, you probably have things to say on that side, too. Uh, so I, I, I just know. I, I just think that uh, I, I feel uh, committed and, uh, and interested and engaged into, uh, in, into uh, the future of France uh, from the outside, actually. Mm -hmm. For us to go to Asia was because half of the world population is in Asia. This is a place of the most intense urbanization, industrialization, and digitization to a certain uh, aspect. And we had grown tenfold in 10 years. And when you grow that fast, it's a big work site, and you need to be in the middle of the trenches and make sure that you put that big work site under control. Now, you speak there about the Asian economy, and of course, China has been a, a major growth engine for the global economy, for the Asian uh, economy. But there are concerns that China is slowing down and that growth in China is slowing down. Uh, do you share those concerns? After all, China is your second biggest market, I believe. Yeah, China is our second largest market. We have close to 30,000 uh, Schneider employees uh, in China, so it's our largest place in terms of, uh, of employees. I, I think nobody should be surprised because uh, the Chinese government had said from the beginning, on a few years ago, uh, with a new plan particularly, that they wanted a more moderate growth that would be more environmentally friendly, uh, more social, more inclusive, uh, and, and this is what they are doing, plus a certain other measures uh, taken to make sure the, to clean uh, the business uh, mm -hmm. ethics, which have the, the, the collateral effect to slow down the economy. Still, a 7% growth is still enviable by many, many countries. It's still very high. Uh, and, but we are just, I think they are just executing their roadmap that they had declared before, mm -hmm. and they do it with a lot of discipline. China's uh, Prime Minister uh, was here in Davos and he said that there won't be a hard landing, as in that, that there won't be a, a quick slowdown in the, in the uh, Chinese economy. Do you believe him? Well, I, I think <laughs> it would be very uh, presumptuous for me to adopt his words, but you have to give credit to China. I think actions and facts preach for China. I mean, China went through uh, the Asian crisis in 98, 99 on meddled through uh, quite well, actually. I think we have to give credit to China in 2009 to have been a booster of the world economy by a stimulus package which sometimes made China suffer, mm -hmm. but it was their contribution to the, uh, uh, to the world situation. And I, I, from what I can observe, of course, it's always walking on tightrope, which is always the case when you manage a, a, a country of 1.3 uh, billion people, which nobody else does. But uh, they have been always very good at, uh, at, at, at maintaining those tight uh, balance, or that difficult balance, uh, with everything they have to manage. I just want to ask about your own company and uh, where you are now uh, as a chief executive and how comfortable you are now with your, your current position. Last year, you, you completed a major acquisition. You bought the, the, the British company Invensys for yeah. more than three billion pounds, uh, I believe. D what are you doing now? Are you looking at further acquisitions or, or what's your strategy from, from here on in? No, we, we've said that uh, with Invensys we were concluding a period of 10 years of transformation whereby we would go from being a product supplier to a full uh, supplier of technologies enabling process automation on energy management, which meant in more simple terms that we used to do products, we are now able to connect them uh, to provide software so that they can manage complicated applications like oil and gas applications, data centers, and 
on those kind of things. So we are now in a period where the priority is about execution on making sure that we integrate very properly all the pieces of the jigsaw, all the companies that we have put together in the past years and deliver to our customers a great job uh, making, helping them on their performance. Making so no fresh acquisitions on the cards? No. Not for now? Right, well, this is, I stick to what we said one year and a half ago. All right. Uh, Jean-Pascal Tricoir, I want to thank you for speaking to us here at France 24. I want to thank you at home for watching and do stay with us here at France 24. We have more news coming your way.